with a man. So we we'll do um we can we can just do a few takes to try and get some good answers. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't <look. laughs> How do I look, Jess? You look gorgeous. Do you want to be part of this job? No. Well, they won't show me anyway. They See these mics? I thought we were using them up. No, we're not. I just can't get that to work. Fair enough. Is there enough? I don't know. Um, we haven't, can't get any more light, I don't think. Do you think it's light enough? Move a bit closer, there, John. Should we start with Marie? Mm. Right, Dave. Um, can you just uh, tell us um, how you first got into music and? Um, I've been a musician for since I was 16, and mainly I've been a songwriter. I've been writing songs, uh, and that's about half my life. I've been writing songs. Um, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> Just tell us a bit about um, you know how you started off getting into music. And, um, oh, okay, what's my background? Okay, okay, I've been writing songs. Since I was about 16, uh, and music has always been quite a big part of my life. I was always really into music, and once I started playing the guitar, I started making my own songs. Um, it's been, it has been quite an important part of my life. It's been part, uh, quite an important way for me to kind of, I suppose, uh, discover bits about me or express parts of myself. Uh, and I've really appreciated music. Um, it's um, it became quite uh, an issue when I started getting involved with Buddhism, because uh, the more I got involved with Buddhism, the more I kind of wondered whether the music I was making was compatible with with Buddhism. Uh, so it was uh, quite a, a quandary. I wasn't sure whether it, whether it could actually fit or not. Um, Part of me felt that uh, actually it didn't, and that I might have to to give it up. Uh, but then, because music has been such a big part of my life, I couldn't give it up just like that. Um, so really, for the last few years, I've just been trying to find ways of uh, bringing music with me uh, as I try and explore Buddhism, as I try and practice uh, Buddhism. You want to? You're almost sort of touching a bit on that yeah. now, so I don't know if you um, let's see. 
What was, the, what was the first question? What? There you go. So, how has um, music affected your life? How has music affected my life? Um, since, while I was growing up, uh, I, it seems like I was, music was always in my background. Music was always there. Um, I was always listening to music, I was always listening to charts and the music that was around in the late 70s and, and so on. Um, when I was 16 I started playing guitar and I started writing, writing my own songs since then as well. And I've been doing that all the way up to quite recently, writing my own songs. So, um, did your music change once you began in, in, to get interested in Buddhism? There was a spell uh, several years ago when I, because I was, was getting in more involved with Buddhism, and I was trying to figure out if my music and Buddhism could go together. I tried, um, I tried writing some Buddhist songs, like lyrics uh, about positive emotions or lyrics about enlightenment or, or something like that. Um, but it just didn't work, actually. It, they just didn't really come together in that way. Because for me, that the, the music that I've been in, interested in, the music that I've been trying to write, and the music that I listen to, uh, it's 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 an authentic kind of uh Okay, well, some time ago I did try to write songs or music which had more of a, less of a personal flavour, more of a, a, a Buddhist kind of flavour. And um, they actually turned out fairly um, badly, actually, because uh, it felt like I was trying to work to somebody else's agenda or I was trying to work to some kind of idea of what I thought uh, Buddhism was supposed to be or something and um, and the music it, it just didn't feel uh, it didn't feel like it was really coming from the heart it didn't feel very authentic it didn't feel like it was really me um, so um, what I'm kind of more concerned with and what I uh, like hearing uh, in music is a uh, kind of authenticity of uh, somebody expressing themselves in a fairly kind of um, uh, heartfelt manner and it might be uh, it might be that sometimes they're s struggling through some um, I don't know some personal problem or situation or something like that and sometimes that can be quite self-indulgent but I think when music really works is it's actually going into some kind of area of suffering or, or personal uh uh, feelings or something but it's actually coming through that it's actually working away through that and that's when I think music can be quite a healing thing where it actually mo moves beyond personal kind of uh, situation and to something which is a bit more universal and that's I think one of the reasons why you know people do like music so much and listen to music not just purely as entertainment it is that as well but I think music can be a much more than that it can actually speak to people very strongly, and very profoundly. So, so um, w what was your aim behind the Heart Song CD? My aim behind trying to... Let me start that again. My aim behind putting together the Heart Song compilation CD was really just uh, to see if it was possible to bring Buddhist musicians from around the UK involved with the FWBO together into... Uh, a compilation of, of music, of songs, and it was partly uh, to see if it would work actually, partly to see what kind of response 
I'd get from asking people to send uh, material in. So it took some time, but after a while we did get quite a lot of people writing in and sending in music that they'd composed and, and, uh, and recorded. So uh, we ended up with 12 tracks that we put onto the CD from small bands, from um, well, larger bands and from solo artists as well as people kind of working together uh, t to perform pieces of music. And we got quite a varied selection of, of music ranging from folk, jazz, through kind of Indian classical forms of music. And so quite different forms of music. But it was coming from people who were all uh, influenced by Buddhism or practicing Buddhists. And it was a, partly a showcase to show the rest of the movement that there is music going on in the movement, that people are, there are musicians in the movement, and uh, like it or not, in a way they're, they're lumped with this thing that they make music or that they, 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 they write songs. And they're trying to do that in a, the context of, of the Sangha. Um, and there's lots of different ways that people, I think, can work in music uh, as a practicing Buddhist. Now, I haven't mentioned anything about the, <laughs> the band, so maybe th there should be a question about the band, actually. <coughs> One of the things I tried to do when I was trying to work out if Buddhism and music would fit together was, um, well, I wanted to try it. I wanted to see if it would work. So one of the things I did was I set about trying to form a band with other Buddhists. Uh, also started thinking about um, producing some kind of compilation uh, CD or tape which would showcase other musicians or bands around the movement, just to see what response we'd get. Now, uh, with the band, we, we formed the band Shine a couple of years ago, and a five-piece band playing mostly kind of rock music, I suppose, or independent kind of pop, pop music, I guess you could call it, um, amplified music. And we've been playing at various venues around Bristol uh, for a couple of years. Uh, one of the most uh, important things about forming the band was just to change my associations with working with other musicians, because in the past, a lot of those associations were to do with, um, well, the usual kind of stereotypical things of drugs and drinks and late nights and partying and all that kind of stuff. Um, I wanted to, I still wanted to carry on making music, but I wanted to do it with people who were open to kind of uh, exploring communication within the context of the band. I wanted to work out ways that we could work together and stay open to each other while we worked out differences, musical differences or personal differences. So those things come up uh, as they do in any other kind of um, work situation. I mean, partly the band was a, a way that we could try and explore right livelihood or the ideals of right livelihood, but also see if we could create something that was uh, some music that was moving and interesting, stimulating, and uh, in coming from our hearts. So that's what we tried to do with the band. Um, the CD came about when people responded uh, to the idea and sent in material of their own music, their own songs, and so on. So the CD was put together to showcase uh, Buddhist musicians in the UK associated with the FWVO. Now, um, a lot of that music, well, there's all different kinds of uh, forms of music on the CD, uh, ranging from folk to, to classical Indian inspired music. I just wanted to firstly encourage 
the musicians in a movement to c keep on doing their music, keep on exploring ways of creating music. And I wanted to show that uh, to other people, non-musicians in the movement, that there was actually quite a strong kind of musical element in the movement, which could produce like uh, very interesting music, very quite moving, emotionally moving music. So what do you think of the idea that um, rock and roll is incompatible with higher mental states required through meditation and fasting and Buddhism? Um, I can't be stumped. Well, I think that's um. <laughs> <laughs> A question that has intrigued me for quite a long time now, so that again. It has been quite an important question to me whether um, the music I make and the music I listen to uh, is compatible with uh, trying to develop and cultivate more positive mental states. Um, a lot of the music I grew up with. Um, was actually quite negative in some ways. It was uh, often, I suppose, quite self-indulgent. And even the music, a lot of the music I made, uh, could be seen to be quite self-indulgent. Because it's this banging <laughs> on the fan. <laughs> Crap, I feel. So let's do something else. Um, That's, that's getting me again. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, some people might say that um, rock and roll music is incompatible with um, the Buddhist spiritual life. Do you agree with that? I think music is a way that human beings can express themselves and find themselves, discover themselves. Um, I don't think it's... Uh, it's a spiritual path. I don't think playing rock and roll music is going to help anyone get enlightened. But um, I do feel that music uh, gives people power, which a lot of people don't feel they have. I feel um, that music is very helpful for, for people to uh, learn more about themselves become more themselves, become more human. And I think, um, yeah, that helps. It helps, I think it helps to, to develop the personality. I think it helps to develop the character by, by expressing yourself through music, through dance. I think it's very important in society that there is something that can help people to express themselves as human beings in a, in a free, creative way. Um, having said that, um, yeah, it's not a path, it's not a spiritual path. Um, I think it can lift one's mood. I think it can help one go into uh, suffering as well. I think some music can, can give you quite a profound um, uh, taste, of, taste of, of, uh, of suffering or, or the suffering of other, other people. Um, and yeah, and sometimes it can be quite self-indulgent, and it's just uh, really not going anywhere. It's a fine line between uh, indulging your emotions and trying to express yourself to become free of whatever's holding you down. So, w so would you say um, rock and roll music would, would be on a par with um, like? Uh, <coughs> hmm, let me think. I think um, it's it's hard to define what rock music is, actually. Um, 
it's maybe not that useful to think about trying to define what rock music is. I don't know. I mean, in one sense, rock music is just something that rocks you. It's a physical sensation. It's a pounding sensation, maybe, that you just feel it, um, which is maybe why it makes people feel so alive when they hear it or when they dance to it. It's, uh, it's something that uh, a lot of people maybe don't often feel normally in, the, in their day-to-day -day lives why people like to go out at the weekends and dance like mad uh, just so they can feel something um, I think folk music or some of the music of those kind of uh, those, those, kind of, those kind of types um, can be a bit more human actually um, and can also express more human qualities but rock and roll music is is useful, I think, to some people. I mean, sometimes um, it it helps me. Rock music has helped me become a human being. Yeah, I I'll, 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 I'll get that. I'm just gonna I'll just do it. let's just do it. We will do it until we get a nice answer, a good answer. David. Can you tell us a little bit about um, your music and how we, um, your practice of Buddhism has affected it? Yeah, I've been I've been a musician since I was sixteen. I've been writing songs since then as well, and um, it's really it's really helped me. What's the question again? Really helped me become an individual. Tell us a bit about you know your music and uh, how um, Buddhism has affected it. Well, I've been a musician and a songwriter since I was sixteen, and I've uh, written quite a lot of songs since then. Lots of different kinds of songs, mainly on guitar, sometimes keyboards, um, sometimes on percussion instruments as well. Um, Things changed a bit when I got more involved with Buddhism because I started to question what my music was about, what I was trying to do with music, uh, what I was actually communicating through music. And uh, for quite some time I was, I was wrestling uh, with the, the skillfulness of music, whether it was something that could actually fit in with a Buddhist lifestyle, whether it was conducive to developing uh, positive mental states and so on um, so really as a result of that uh, those those questions then I started thinking about um, forming a band with other Buddhists because up till then I uh, the people I've been uh, playing with uh, hadn't been um, hadn't been Buddhist Oh, yes. Um, what, what was your uh, main aim behind putting together the Heart Song CD? The main aim behind putting together the Heart Song CD was partly to encourage <coughs> other musicians in the movement to keep on doing their music. Um, I wanted to show that there was people who were interested in the fact that Buddhists were making music, even if it was just me. Um, also, I wanted to show other people around in the movement that there was other musicians and that they were making music and they were Buddhists. And I wanted to see if actually the two things could go together. I wanted to see if it could, um, if people could would see that people who are practicing Buddhism uh, can also make music, that the two are can be can go well together. Um, we had quite a good response from people around the UK uh, sending in material, different songs and, and bits of music and so on. And so in the end we were able to, to put together a compilation of 12 different tracks. So would you, would you say um, in your own, own uh, personal, personal music Help, 
music has been quite a strong element in my life for a lot of long time. Um, I haven't been able just to, to give it up. Even when I've questioned uh, whether it is compatible with, 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 a, with leading a, a more Buddhist life. Um, it's something that I want to take with me as a practicing Buddhist. It's something I want to develop. And I, I find it really exciting that Buddhist musicians can work together and in, in a harmonious way, or work towards that ideal anyway, uh, can be open to each other to, uh, to, to question their differences and to kind of mediate differences, whether it's musical differences or personal dif differences. Um, in the same way uh, any other right life situation can work. I think on top of that, the whole process of um, creating music it's just an, an amazing kind of uh, mystery, you know, how it happens, the, the process of, of creating some new form of music or a new song or, or piece of music and, uh, and developing it with other people and then putting it out so that other people can hear it and respond to it. I find that uh, very exciting. If that can have a positive effect on the listener, if that can have a positive uh, effect on the process of the the musician developing themselves, becoming more and more human. I think that's a, just a very good thing. So, what would you have you got anything in the pipeline coming up now? Or what's uh, so talk about Shine a bit, the band. One of the other ways I was trying to uh, about two years ago we formed a band called Shine um, here in Bristol a Buddhist band uh, playing um, guitars, drums, bass, keyboards the rest of it and over the last two years we've been playing different venues around Bristol and other places and again, that that's been uh, partly an experiment uh, to see how well we'll get on with each other, see if we can actually do it as Buddhists. Can we actually make music? Can we actually perform music? Will people actually like it? Um, and it's been hard work. It's been really hard work. Um, it's been quite challenging, but it's also been very good because we we have got to know each other quite well working together that this closely for two years. We've we've come up against different aspects of ourselves in, in rehearsals and practices and gigs and so on. And we've supported each other through it as well. Um, but we're now we're breaking up. We've decided that we can't um, we can't it, we've gone as far as we can with it actually. I do think there is a limit to uh, the kind of music uh, we play it's not going to get us enlightened playing rock music um, but I think it does help us become more and more human uh, it, it does help us express our, our humanity with other human beings and that's been a really valuable thing what I'd like to do personally is um, I'd like to see more people kind of experimenting with music, or just exploring their whole creative side, whether it's music, whether it's art, literature, poetry. There's already a lot of it in the movement, and uh, I think it's a great thing that that's encouraged. There's also possibly another question about um, making Buddhism popular, I suppose. Because um, it's possible that Buddhism can become something a little bit watered down wherein you still meditate once a day, you still uh, think a little bit about ethics and you go on a retreat a couple of times a year and you just fit it onto your, um, your, your normal kind of lifestyle. Um, actually, I don't want to talk about that because that's really negative. Was there uh, much interest from the your local sound in Bristol towards the band? How, how did it go down? We, 
we, we had some great gigs actually uh, when the whole sangha turned up or a lot of the sangha turned up um, really good um, events where uh, we had bands playing or, or other musicians playing bits of poetry and things like that and created a whole environment where we, we take over a local venue uh, and and play this music and 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 have a good time and you and quite often we'd be raising money for some kind of uh, event for the, the for whatever event that it was um and i just um yeah it, it's um yeah it's some it's another aspect of the, the sangha i guess in, in just it worked it worked well to bring the sangha together yeah definitely 